there are some beers that really define the brewery for me. And for Alaskan brewing, it's their amber. I have reviewed several amber ales on this channel. Um, they are just like the happy middle of so many beers, especially of ale in general. Um, Alaskan's amber is quite a light amber. It's nearly honey colored. It's actually, it's light honey. It's, um, if you're familiar with different types of honey, in my experience, this would be like an orange blossom honey color. The head is a little bit uh, tan and quite thick actually. Yeah, the beer is very clear. Uh, when I think of Alaskan brewing, nearly always the first thing is their amber. That's just what it is to me. Um, it's been around for quite a while. You can find it. I can find it most places. Like if I see Alaskan, I can find their amber. I do believe they make a, a Whit beer as well. Um, I'm pretty sure I've had it, though it has been a while. Anyways, uh, so amber ales. Also, they historically, they, they share a lot in common with the the brown ale or the bitter, the English bitter, um, just in style um, or in in color. And really, it's it's the modern version of that beer. Um, I think if we, Newcastle Brown is another uh, pretty well known brown ale. You'll see it, it has a in the same color family. Um, another thing I was reading recently, my wife found a uh, the beer Bible. A book I've had on my wish list for quite some time had a second-hand store, had Goodwill for a very low price and got it for me. And um, I realized that in a lot of my descriptions of beer in the past, um, which are always from an amateur's knowledge, I'm not an expert, I have assumed that the, the malt involved in brewing a beer is usually all the same color. And, or at least maybe even predominantly the same color. So if you have a stout, it's gonna be all dark malts. And if it's amber, it's gonna be all lighter malts. And if it's a pale, it's gonna be all very pale malts. But that's not actually the case, apparently. There are a few malts that are like really easy to get. And because they're light colored, that means they, don't they didn't require quite so much processing, so they're less expensive. And they have a really good like base flavor. And so the majority of beers, even like regardless of their color or their final resulting um, style, will begin with significant quantities, a significant amount of their malt build being these very standard malts. Um, I want to say it was crystal and caramel, but I might be wrong on that. Um, and then there are malts that are added for flavor. There are malts that are added for body and there are malts that are added for color of the final product. And then all together that makes up the mash bill or the, not the, yeah, the mash bill, the malt bill. Um, the malt makes the mash. The mash is made out of the malt. What goes into that is called the bill, right? Um, so looking at this, so this is not just made with red colored, you know, moderately roasted hot uh, malts. In fact, these are pretty lightly roasted in the grand scheme of things. Um, this is made using likely a lot of decently pale malts to begin with, and then there is a certain quantity of darker malts that are added to um, to bring the color to the place it wants to be. Uh, a lot of other ambers I've had tend to be darker than this, even significantly. So, um, trying to think offhand, but. I think I just had an amber. I just reviewed an amber not terribly long ago. Oh yeah, um, Bad Batch Brewing's Red Five, which should be going up, which should already be up by the time this video goes up. Um, I'm pretty sure that is a, a decent amount darker than this one is. In that darkness, I would expect a more pronounced hoppy, or hoppy, a more pronounced roasted character than I would in this, being a much more lightly uh, lightly colored beer. So I'm expecting this to be more about bready flavors and less about roasty flavors. I'm expecting a balancing amount of hops, probably airing towards the earthy side rather than the floral or fruity. 
Um, definitely not tropical hops. You wouldn't expect that in an amber. Especially if it's trying to stay relatively true to its historic English roots. Um, earthy and woody sort of hops are generally more of what I'm going to expect to to taste and smell in this in this beer. <sighs> yeah, yeah. There's very little roastiness to the nose. Uh, what is there is a uh, earthy, um, maybe a little bit of horse blanket. Um, this kind of round, smooth. Not funkiness, but yeah, earthiness, I think, works. Maybe a little bit of, like, date sweetness. Yeah, as I really leave my nose in there, the kind of this date sweetness is is um, decently present. Let's uh, see how it tastes. Mm. Yeah, that's nice. Um, sweet for an amber. Not a problem, just in comparison to other ambers, this is sweet. There's a, a slight minerality to it, and then you have um, like apple and date, fruit sweetness, um, a little bit of nuttiness, and really no hop in the, in the body, like no none of that earthy, woody note in the body, but in the finish, as you've swallowed it, then you're left with this really mild very mild, um, earthy hoppiness. Uh, this is one of the beers we tend to keep on hand um, because it's one that my wife enjoys. And so that means it's very low bitterness. Um, I don't think it has, no, it doesn't have the, like the international bittering unit measurement on the can itself. I suppose I could look that up, but I can't be bothered to at the moment. Besides which, I'm recording on my phone, so how would I? And my computer's busy recording, too. <laughs> All my devices are busy to get this recorded properly, so. <laughs> yeah, so this is pretty mild as far as ambers go. In, in general, what I appreciate about ambers and what I have appreciated about ambers in the past is the fact that they are um, a balance of maltiness and hoppiness. Um, they aren't even nearly so heavily hopped as a pale ale. Forget India pale ale. Um, they they kind of bridge the gap between the very malt focused, maybe um, Belgian or um, uh, Hefeweizens, stuff like that, and the more hop focused pale ales and so forth. And they kind of sit in the middle there. And they're about letting all the flavors sing in balance. This, in the balance, is towards the malt side. So amongst this middle-of-the-road style that is amber, the Alaskan amber is to the malt side of things. And it does an excellent job at that. Um, it's smooth. It's, uh, it's an easy drinker. It, um, it goes well with a lot of foods. Though with the sweetness, um, I'm not sure it would stand up quite so well to maybe pizza or um, salty fatty foods as would a more a drier or more heavily hopped um, amber or other beer style it's just a good beer it's just a great beer the beer i enjoy and uh yeah that's gonna wrap this up anyways this is me matthew i have been drinking and enjoying alaskan Brewings, Amber, and I will catch y'all on the flip side.